Yeah. Six meters. Nusageli is an island on the southern perimeter of Roviana Lagoon in the western province. It backs onto Bonavona Lagoon and a 20 minute dinghy ride to either Munda or Noro. That's Johnny Vito. He lives over in that little hut over there on the Nusageli. Gave him a bag of food and stuff the other day. Apparently he still smokes, so we gave him some, uh, we had some cigarettes for trading. We gave him some other things, gave him a few things. And uh, today he paid us a visit and he dropped off some limes and some coconuts. And uh, he came on the boat for story story. Okay. Talk talk, he come for talk talk. And he wants to come back for Talk Talk. And he's asked us to go to the, the village sometime and see him. And he's going to do a bit of sightseeing with us. So there's about 20 people who live at Nusageli here on this island. And they're blocks, just blocks of uh, land. So he's 89. And I think he said he was 12 when the Japanese were here. But all the people when the Japanese came, they went and hid in Vona Vona Lagoon, which is just around the corner. And then when the Japanese left and the Americans came, they all came out and went back to their uh, villages and towns. So he'd, uh, he wants us to spend a month here. He says, Can you stay here and you, sp you stay here for a month. But a uh, long time. <laughs> He's a very nice old man. I think his wife's ill and Marie, I think she's in hospital at Munda at the moment, but he's there. And I think his sons and daughters come and see him sometimes, make sure he's okay. But he's still uh, travelling around in his dugout and going fishing, so he's, uh, he's, in, he's in good nick. narrows to the town of Noro. The next day we are headed there to extend our visas and obtain some food from the market. So these are the Bougainville boys. These guys are religious preachers, I think, and they've come all the way from Bougainville in the banana boat. It's a long way. <laughs> so we're in Nora at the moment. We came here to get our uh, visas extended, but the guy who looks after immigration is away this morning. We'll have to go and see him later. But the markets has moved here. So it used to be next to the ocean, but now it's moved a bit further back now.
on. Hmm? Yes. Oh. Video. Me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is Johnny Vito. Johnny Vito. Johnny Vito. Yeah. Johnny's 89 last week. Yeah. 89 years young. Yeah. And he had a party here as well, all the relations came over. <laughs> and when we first came here, Johnny rode out to see us. And he brought us some things. We brought him a few things when we were going back to Australia. And we're just having a walk around the island now. So Johnny's here with his wife Marie. And some dogs. How many dogs you got? How many dogs? Uh, doggy? Yeah. Uh, four. Four. Four dogs. Four dogs. Four dogs. And uh, there's a place for the house you stayed before here. Mm -hmm. One house. And they uh, built a new one uh, area there. Yeah. So there's a house here, was yeah, it? A house here before here. Yeah. And you moved? And then we all moved over. Yeah. <laughs> there. Moved over there. Yeah. And I stay here and I plant in the area of coconuts here. The coconuts, the yeah. 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 Yeah, for the children in future. And you've been here 30 years? Yeah. 30 years? Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah my old one I stay in the house because he's sick, a little bit sick. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, yeah. I hope she gets better. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, we'll have a walk through to the other side yeah. of the island, eh? Yeah. So this tree up here has got some stakes in the water. Yeah. It's just when people come ashore, because a lot of the dead branches there, just so no, none of the branches fall on anybody. Yeah. So this is the coconut house, made for cooking coconut. Mm. And you make these as well? Well this is uh, the rotting house here, I built this, this I want to be repaired more. You're going to repair it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they, the, the houses with this last a long time. Yeah, this is a house for wall here. Yeah, how long they last? Uh, not long, yeah. 10, 12 years? Yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> All right, Johnny, we'll go for a walk. Okay. I see Leah. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, the cable, we are uh, attend the birthday. Oh, that's for the birthday, birthday celebrations. Uh, on that Tuesday, last year. Yeah, yeah, last yeah. week. The time you present to me. <laughs> ah, right. So we've got the three boats in the bay here. We've got uh, Brave, Karma Waters and Us Escape. And uh, there's five of us. And we're gonna go and uh, see if we can um, dive Sharp Point, which is just outside the Munda Bar. Um, it's well known for um, hammerhead sharks, makos, whalers, reef sharks, all of those <laughs> sharks. Whether we see any or not, I don't know. We're looking for the current. So if we've got a current running, and we can get to the point, it's quite deep. There's a good chance we might see some sharks. There's supposed to be a good possibility out there. Um, we've got a local guy called Harold who we've hired for the day to take us out there. And we've got 10 tanks between us, so we'll, we'll try and get two dives in each. Olivia, going to the desert. Lawrence Olivia. Yes. I hope I'm in 
lost in here. <laughs> Apparently there's going to be so many sharks, there's all sorts of sharks there. Oh, Makos, <laughs> hammerheads, whalers, great whites, everything. Treasure sharks. Ah, everybody's related to Johnny. Our dive site was a 20 minute boat ride from Noosa Gully over the Munda Bar. Shark Point is situated at the end of a reef that protrudes out into the Solomon Sea where it drops off more than 600 metres. The steep walls are adorned by large Gorgonia fans and we drifted along the reef edge. We saw a few reef sharks but not the large oceanic species that we were hoping for. Hey baby, if you're looking for some crazy Alfred and John, some local fishermen, drop off these crayfish. So we've got this one big one and two little ones. 
um, and it cost us um, 10 Australian dollars and a couple of cigarettes. So John's just come over and he's told us about this uh, area over the island where they're, um, they're planting seaweed to sell. So I don't know, you, you probably can't see it, but there's a peg on the left hand side of that catamaran in front of us, Brave. There's a peg over there which they've put in the water, it's a red peg. And what they're going to do is they're going to grow seaweed on it and they're going to put some mesh or netting up to stop the fish getting at it as well. So we gave Johnny some goggles so he can go diving and check it out as well. So he's looking after it. And I think they're going to sell the seaweed through the blue container in Noro. I think that's the idea. Our time in the Solomon Islands is up and we need to make our way back to Australia. In the next episode we show our preparations for leaving and a few dramas as we sail across the Solomon Sea. Come and join us. We've just had a rather serious event happen.